Hello there, my name is Dr. Mashkar Khan. I'm a consultant physician at Epsom and St. Helier's University Hospitals NHS Trust. I'm also an honorary senior lecturer and I'm also a teacher, University of London. So the difference between age-related memory changes and dementia is very often asked and very hard to miss. As we know, as we get older, we all have senior moments. Uh, the Americans call it benign essential forgetfulness, where you go to a room and you forget why you've quite got there. A lot of people do that. They think they've got dementia, but they haven't. So that is basically um, not dementia, but when you do it every single day, where you're, every day there's a hunt going around, where you've lost your glasses, you've just lost your car keys, you can't find your wallet, that's when you should be worried. And one of the early features is loss of navigation. So you go to pick, uh, pick up the newspaper and you can't find your way back, or you're driving the car and you take the wrong turn and then you say, oops, I'm lost. Uh, can't find my way back home. So those are the features that we need to differentiate. And also when the family feel that the person is becoming quieter, so you want to listen more and talk less, where your world starts to shrink, where you lose your motivation, you lose your speech, and you just uh, nod rather than speak. And that's when I get worried. So I would say to you, is dementia a normal sign of aging? The answer is no, because uh, uh, you've got people who are in the 90s. I certainly have people who are working at 90, believe it or not, who don't have dementia. They're perfectly capable. They can actually correct me and beat me in the puzzles and quizzes. It's not a part of aging. Uh, it is a disease, just like heart disease or lung disease. It's a it's wear and tear of the brain, which is accentuated with inability to look after yourself and inability to carry out your activities of daily living, which is shopping, cooking, cleaning, etc. So the way to think about this is medical attention should be sought early. The best uh, description I can give you is that if you're driving down the motorway, if you then see your lights come on to say that your petrol's running out, a normal person would stop at the next petrol station and get some more petrol. You wouldn't wait until your car is out of petrol and you, your car stops. So I think that there's a lot of merit to diagnose dementia early so that uh, you have the right prevention, right treatment, and people are given the confidence to lead a full life, to enjoy your holidays, uh, and especially spend time with your family and friends. So I think that if the answer to your question that when should dementia be uh, when should you ask for help is to ask for help as soon as possible. So how is dementia diagnosed is a very important question because dementia even today, the best diagnosis is clinical. Uh, the, the family certainly are more aware of what happens to the person, their loved ones. Um, I recently saw uh, a gentleman who was brought in by his wife. And the only thing that she said, she said that uh, my husband used to hate rock music, always hated it. But I took him to a status quo concert uh, at Epsom Downs and he loved it. And I'm living with a stranger. This is a different man. Therefore, please help him. There's something wrong with his memory. So I think that there is a case for a diagnosis clinically. We do scans, MRI scans, because that looks at the hippocampus. The hippocampus is like the computer of the brain, very small area, and you can see that there's some hippocampal atrophy. But more importantly, the subtle feature, very subtle, is the asymmetry of the brain. So one brain is different from the other, that gives a clue. And of course, um, there's wear and tear of the temporal lobes, the frontal lobes, uh, and the posterior lobe. If you can um, diagnose it through a, a battery of tests, particularly uh, 
blood tests and you look at the reversible causes, for instance, uh, you look at uh, deficiency of vitamins, particularly B12, vitamin uh, iron if they're anemic, uh, you look at uh, calcium. So we do a battery of blood tests as well as a, an MRI scan uh, until newer uh, diagnostic options come. These are the best options of diagnosing uh, dementia. And, it, and we do this routinely to uh, give a yes and no answer. And then we also do a memory test. We do Montreal cognitive assessment and serum ACE levels, uh, ACE test. So we do a battery of memory tests, which also help. So, so thank you for that question. I was the uh, section president of uh, the Royal Society of Medicine gerontology section in 2016 to 2018. And it's been a great honor and privilege to be re-elected by the council uh, for another term. Uh, it's very rare and I'm deeply honored. Uh, I must have done something right to be re-elected again. So I'm looking forward to the great challenges that uh, lay ahead, as you know, because of the COVID pandemic, education and training have suffered. Uh, people have been recruited to do the COVID on calls and the COVID uh, wards. So we have a lot of catching up to do. We, we um, obviously uh, education uh, was not given directly so people didn't have the opportunity of meeting face to face, which is important for networking and also to see how our colleagues are doing. So I'm going to reverse all that. I'm going to bring in um, good educational uh, meetings. So uh, our flagship meeting is the biology of aging, the aging heart, the aging kidneys, the aging skin. So I'm, I'm planning to do another session of biology of aging. I'm also going to look at um, uh, working with the other sections, particularly the digital health section and the occupational health section. I'm organizing a very important uh, meeting about the older patient at work, where we, we know that a lot of elderly do come back and work for a long time. Uh, and, and, and various other projects I've got um, lined up for 2023. And I think that uh, the Royal Society of Medicine has been around for uh, several hundred years. Uh, and it's uh, a beacon of education and training, and I'm very privileged to be part of it. That's a good question. How can dementia be delayed or prevented? I go to a, a seminal uh, paper that looked at the Red Indians that live uh, in Alaska. And the Red Indian chiefs never got dementia because the chief was always asked questions like, uh, I've had a baby, what shall I name my baby? Uh, I've, I'm going to want to do business. What business shall I do, chief? Uh, chief, what do you think about me traveling? So the chief actually was protected by uh, being asked questions. And the lesson of that paper was that if you don't use it, you lose it. And dementia can be prevented by using the brain, which is like a, an organ that needs exercise like, like our muscles do. Uh, and so reading, I would ask everybody to read. I would ask everybody to do the crosswords. Um, if you do the sun crosswords, you could still be demented. I think you should do <laughs> the, the daily telegraph or times. But if, you, if the sun is all you want to do, please do any, any crossword is fine. Um, then of course, um, doing jigsaws. Uh, some of my male patients find it very difficult to do jigsaws, but they're learning. Jigsaws are very good for preventing dementia and diet is extremely important. So having a low fat diet, having lots of peanuts and monosaturated nuts, uh, fruit and vegetables. There's a compelling uh, paper that's just come out that certain fruit, for instance, passion fruit, they're saying now is uh, uh, very good for uh, memory. So I'm recommending everybody to buy passion fruit. And also, of course, a pomegranate. Pomegranate has got very high antioxidants. Uh, and believe it or not, drinking lots of coffee. So it's the caffeine you need, not the decaf. So if they drink three or four cups every day, then you're off to a flying start. So the question is, what uh, uh, help can we give with dementia. So I, I like to say 
that all dementia patients should lead a, lead a normal life. Um, I look, look after a professor of medicine and he still publishes in the British Medical Journal, uh, but he can't look after himself. So his wife says that he needs help with um, activities of daily living. But the fact that he's allowed to uh, use his brain to the full is, is excellent because we are, uh, it's a very funny old uh, organ, the brain. Uh, what we really enjoy doing, for instance, if we enjoy uh, reading, then you can still read for a bit longer. If you still enjoy sports, then you can still play a bit of tennis, you can still play a bit of badminton, and you can still play golf. Some people say that I monitor my dementia progression by seeing how well I do in my golf course. If I'm doing well, then my dementia is fine, and if I'm not, it's progressing. And often I, I, I get that history from them that tell us about your golf. That, you know, so that's why it's very important to go out for daily walks, uh, daily activities. I, I, I say to every uh, dementia patient that there are three things that you need to do to increase your uh, longevity and reduce your dementia suffering. One is eat less. Don't fill your stomach with food. Number two is cut out stress. So don't get worried. Life's too short. Uh, you can just should enjoy life to the full. Don't worry about what's around the corner. It may never happen. And the third is exercise more. And you don't have to go on a marathon from being sedentary, but I tell them that it's the, it's the time. So you walk every day for 40 minutes and that's enough. And that's modest exercise. If people can do this routinely every single day, then that's what they need to get better and keep dementia at bay. So what are the support uh, that's available in dementia is a very important question. So don't forget, we have the Alzheimer's Society who are excellent. They have uh, Alzheimer's nurses, the Admiral nurses. There are certain centers that are very good, like Orchard Center and other centers where you can uh, go there. And there's, there are things like singing for the brain. They do mental exercises. They do crosswords and jigsaws. It's a fabulous setup. And people go there and they come back very positive. They feel that they meet like-minded people and they feel much better. There's also befriending service. There's uh, luncheon clubs. You can uh, dial a ride, you can go out. And, and, and the important thing is um, doing lots of things like painting, uh, artistic stuff, just to relax your brain. And uh, I get a lot of people who paint, uh, even if it's paint by numbers, you should just paint anything. And they bring it back to me and they say, look at me, I'm getting better. And it's wonderful because um, it, they spend a lot of time painting. So there are lots of other non-pharmacological treatments that you can use, which are very effective. Uh, but the important thing uh, above everything is positive re reinforcement, encouragement, and never to give up and never to lose heart and never to lose your confidence. Because if you keep your confidence up, uh, it's like having an, a, a slow computer. The computer works, but it just takes longer. And I say to my patients that your computer is in a search mode all the time. It's working fine, but it will come and reach the conclusion. Just give it time and be patient. So um, I'm, I'm entering a very um, um, big journey in my life. I've uh, been re-elected as the section president in a very important time of uh, our medical sort of, of uh, history. It's uh, where we are just recovering from post-COVID and it's a time when we are entering a new chapter for trainees and consultants and the health service in general. So I'm looking forward to using my uh, 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 position as section president to uh, work with other um, sections and other uh, external departments. I'm also looking forward to uh, working in the Geller Institute, which is the Institute for Aging and Memory, uh, University of West London. And I've been appointed as a visiting fellow for three years. And I hope to do some research and some publications and some teaching on dementia and try to find how we can best treat our patients and whether there's some different cures. I mean, there are 140 research uh, options going on 
at the, at the minute. So we will find a cure for dementia. It's just being patient uh, and being uh, persistent. Um, there are two drugs around the corner. Uh, one drug has been launched in America, uh, aducinumab, and there's another drug which will be launched next year, which is a drug from Aberdeen. They're just sorting out the doses. There will be other drugs coming, and I'm not saying that these drugs, uh, are, they're, they're a magic bullet, but they help. So the way to think about dementia is the way to think about diabetes, that we manage diabetes as a chronic disease. We have more than one drug, and then some people live 40, 50 years with diabetes, and they live a healthy life with no complication. They don't have blindness or they don't have their legs chopped off. They lead a very good life. But it's often in the hands of the individual. So we need to point them in the right direction and encourage them. And that dementia will be like the same, that we'll have a, a few drugs. None of them will be a magic bullet, but they'll help. And people can still live with this condition in a pretty normal way. 